Hello everyone, Tom here. This is Joy and Route. If you're new to the channel, thanks for tuning in and uh, checking it out. Uh, I think you'll find the content uh, pretty interesting today. Um, and um, if uh, not, if you uh, are a long-term uh, viewer of the channel, thanks for coming back and uh, and uh, checking out the uh, latest video. Uh, I'm out on my deck in Wisconsin with a beautiful dwarf Asian lilac behind me. Very fragrant. Uh, smells lovely. And uh, just thought I'd uh, give you a, a, a brief little update here on uh, what's been going on. Because you may be thinking, well, where you been? Uh, I had been on a very consistent uh, weekly uh, upload schedule of videos and uh, that suddenly kind of dropped off. There was a little bit of a foreshadowing to that in the video, in the last video I did, the one just before this one, in which I was uh, talking about weather awareness. And I mentioned that I am en route to Wisconsin, or I was at that time, <laughs> obviously I'm here now. Uh, and um, because I had some business to take care of up here. So I do have a rental property in the Madison, Wisconsin area, and uh, it was going to experience a vacancy, or I, I mean the current tenants were uh, telling me that they're gonna leave, so I had to get up here to um, get new tenants uh, for the June 1 rental that is coming right up. We're about a third of the way through May, uh, 2024 at this time and um, so I've got a few weeks uh, to wait before June 1 when the new tenants will be moving in so I'm kind of here for that uh, and and that alone frankly uh, but um, shortly uh, uh, immediately following June 1 I will be on the road and I'll be heading to Elkhart Indiana where <clears throat> Some work needs to be uh, taken care of on Joy. So uh, Elkhart is uh, Joy's uh, uh, birthplace. It's where Embassy Specialty Vehicles um, has their shop and where they build these beautiful um, Embassy Dolphin uh, RVs, motorhomes, uh, built on Ford. Um, uh, or uh, ProMaster or uh, Mercedes Sprinter chassis. And uh, there's also a, a gathering of um, embassy RV owners at uh, a campground uh, called EB's Pines. And so uh, I'll be uh, joining them as well right after the work is completed on Joy. Um, in any case, uh, so th that's kind of the situation uh, that I'm in here right now. Uh, working to get new tenants uh, for my rental and uh, uh, the other stuff uh, while here has not been particularly compelling for uh, video content. Uh, now that I do have tenants uh, lined up for June 1, uh, the other thing that I've been doing is a real deep cleaning on Joy because, um, well, uh, there's going to be a lot of uh, activity in Joy down at Embassy, and uh, it, it was time for a good clean out. So there's that. So let's go ahead and uh, get into the, the video here and uh, talk a little bit about uh, nomad expenses, what you can expect or what certainly I have expected. Uh, experienced on the road <clears throat> and uh, that you might uh, experience should you decide to go out. You may be watching this video because you're interested in uh, what it costs to uh, take on a nomadic uh, lifestyle. And of course it's going to vary uh, deeply for, uh, uh, for each person that uh, undertakes this kind of an adventure, but um, Maybe you'll see some common expenses uh, in uh, how I go about things that uh, uh, that would uh, be the same for you, and you'll see other areas that you think, well, no, 
uh, I'll either be spending more or less on uh, that particular category of expenses. But let's just uh, get into it. But first, I need some coffee. I allow myself two cups of coffee a day. Of course, they're equivalent to a grande, you know, coffee at most places because I use a solo cup, which is 16 ounces, uh, in order to uh, collect the correct amount of water for my coffee. So we'll fill that up. Now for the tricky part, pouring without spilling. Okay, and let's get this going. Max power to the water to get it boiling. Still gonna have to wait a few minutes. While that's going down, I will take my filter and do a little origami on it. This is a number four filter, and I need it to fit in a number two pour over cone. So, I just kind of finagle it a little bit. So that it comes to a point uh, at the bottom instead of a flat um, place. I don't know. It's weird how those number four cones work. Anyway, so there's a number two cone. Stick it in my little pour over thing here. And add some coffee. No, this isn't actually Folgers coffee. It's actually uh, Costco medium roast coffee, which I like a lot. That's It's really good coffee. Uh, but the uh, container that um, Folgers makes is pretty much perfect for storing coffee in this vehicle. Okay, now we're just waiting on uh, boiling water. Eventually. Okay, here we are on the computer, and um, coffee in hand, we will now delve into the expenses uh, for myself personally, and um, maybe this might give you some insight into what a full-time nomad uh, is experiencing in terms of expenses, right? So what does it cost to be a, a nomad? And for myself in particular, kind of more of a digital nomad because I like to be on a computer and uh, do stuff here on a computer. Uh, love making these videos for you. Love gaming with friends. Um, love doing a little application development. As a matter of fact, I'm currently in the process of writing my own 
accounting software uh, here on the computer. So yeah, I, I kind of, you know, need to have uh, a computer around me. I'm a career long IT guy. It's hard to pull that out of me. It's just kind of what it is. Okay. So I'll put the coffee aside and let's dive in. So as you can see, I'm reporting the period between last year, April 1st, and this year, the last day of March. There's kind of a reason why I do that. I've been finding myself returning to Wisconsin uh, at the end of March. And, um, and that's because I have business that kind of typically goes down uh, in that time frame. And so I kind of almost have to be up here uh, around then. So I just figured that seems like a good place to do it. Uh, I could do, you know, January 1 to December 31, but um, this seems to be a more, um, I, I don't know, it, it, it just seemed to work a little bit better for me this way. And I mean, when it really comes right down to it, it doesn't really matter what months they are, right? Um, as long as it's covering an entire year period. And uh, for me, uh, as you might recall, I got out on the road in November of 2022. It was November 11, 2022. So 11, 11, 22 uh, is when I um, set out on this journey. So we're looking at more than, well, we're several months in when this expense statement kicks in. So uh, we've gotten some of the, uh, the early growing pains out of the way. They're not going to be a factor here. And we're kind of looking at more how things are playing out more consistently on a month to month basis. And there's always going to be some, you know, expenses that are not, um, maybe normal. Uh, so they could be omitted. Uh, as you can see, I've got uh, my annual and monthly breakdown in columns E and F here. And over in H and I, I've kind of um, things that I think are strictly nomad that are very uh, tightly tied to just being in this vehicle, driving around, staying at uh, uh, state parks or at Walmarts or, you know, wherever. And uh, so what uh, we can kind of uh, look at it from both a, you know, this is a normal thing that has like everything. And these are the things we're, that were more strictly uh, for the nomadic journey. But, um, and then you can just go ahead and plug in the numbers for yourself here. If, if, um, uh, at, at uh, key places where you think that uh, your expenses would differ from mine. Uh, everybody's situation is unique, right? So um, it's just a matter of kind of looking at these numbers and saying, is this reasonable for me? Uh, should I really make an adjustment to these numbers just so that I can get a more accurate um, idea of what I would be paying if I were a nomad out on the road? Uh, and hopefully that will help you out. Uh, so uh, the first thing is auto expenses. So obviously I'm sitting here in a big Ford Transit that is outfitted by Embassy Specialty Vehicles to be a Dolphin SS RV or motor home, motor, uh, motor home as the state of Wisconsin refers to it. And uh, so obviously things like gas are going to play a big factor in uh, my travels. So you can see that uh, over this uh, one year period, I paid $3,733.80 in gas. And that breaks down to about three eleven fifteen dollars monthly. Um, I did pay <laughs> to park in a surface lot in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Um, last summer, and uh, it was right in downtown Grand Rapids on a Sunday afternoon, or actually a Sunday morning when I pulled in there, and then I just sort of spent the uh, the day in uh, downtown Grand Rapids, but I needed uh, a, a place to park, and everybody told me street parking was free 
on uh, Sunday uh, in downtown Grand Rapids. I could not verify that. It looked to me like all the meters were up and running. I saw nothing that said Sunday uh, free on the meters. So I'm like, okay, I found a surface lot, pulled in, parked. It cost me 20 bucks. You may or may not have anything like that. And so over here on the Strictly Nomad uh, column, you know, I just omitted that one. It's just may not be a factor. But if you like um, being in downtown areas, one of the things that I've noticed some nomads doing is actually overnighting in some of these uh, surface lots in um, uh, more uh, central areas of, of cities and towns. And uh, so they pay for it and I, I don't know, I guess it affords them some security and whatnot. So, I mean, that's one way to deal with it. I don't typically do downtown areas, and certainly I'm not sleeping overnight in the middle of a, you know, you know, right downtown somewhere. So this was a, an odd uh, situation for me. Registration, however, is not odd. It's an annual uh, rite of passage for this vehicle to get a new sticker to put on its license plate which makes me legal for the next year. So 6750 is what the state of Wisconsin wants on an annual basis to keep my license plates uh, active and uh, alive. So there's that. Your mileage will definitely vary here. State by state, it's different almost everywhere. So vehicle maintenance is another uh, really important thing to keep up on, things like oil changes. So I had uh, a little over $300 uh, this, uh, during this one year period in primarily oil changes. There were a few other little small things that I uh, picked up along the way to kind of help Joy uh, do her thing. Uh, but uh, for the most part, that's just been oil changes. And remember, too, I am under uh, Ford's warranty on this vehicle. This is a 2022. Uh, we're in 2024, so I've got like another year uh, uh, to go. I'll probably cross the, the 36,000 mile, you know, basic warranty thing before I hit the end of this year, maybe. Uh, so I don't know. Point here being that uh, a lot of the expenses uh, for vehicle maintenance are just being covered by Ford under the vehicle's warranty. If you have an older vehicle uh, that you're converting to a van or that somebody or maybe you uh, bought used and um, there is no manufacturer's warranty on the vehicle uh, any longer, then uh, obviously vehicle maintenance may be a larger expense for you. If you need to, um, you know, repair something on the vehicle, uh, this could definitely kick up a bit. Clothes, I don't know how I managed to spend uh, nearly $560 in clothes, um, but I suppose uh, some things, I, I, I know that there are two pairs of shoes in here. Uh, uh, that's one thing. And I think for the most part, the rest of them are like t-shirts that I've picked up at, uh, various venues that I've visited and, uh, just as, uh, you know, momentums and, uh, you know, just to say, Hey, I got the t-shirt. <laughs> Now here we get into kind of a nomadic uh, or a, a digital nomad kind of thing uh, where I've got computer hardware and software here. Uh, part of this uh, I know was purchasing a external storage drive because doing these videos really sucks down a lot of disk space in a hurry. So I had to get uh, some way to archive you know, things off of the laptop itself and uh, off uh, safely to external storage. And uh, also uh, my keyboard, uh, which I love. It's a Logitech G19. Anybody look in, you know, in the market for a keyboard, definitely look at this one for sure. It is uh, wireless, as you can see. There's no wires here. And that's really important to me uh, because I don't need cords, you know, stretching all over the place and it makes it nearly impossible to walk around in here. My mouse too is, is cordless. So, uh, and then software too. So 
Uh, I do spend some money on uh, photo editing software, video editing software. I have maintenance agreements or, you know, annual subscriptions uh, is another way of saying that uh, in order to keep all of that stuff current. And uh, so about $380 annually in uh, just keeping software current. Uh, you, again, you may or may not have this. A lot of people are out on the road saying, you know what, I'm off grid when I'm doing my travels. And that's fine too. I think you got to be on grid, you know, at, to, to some extent because you're doing route planning and you need to have uh, navigation and that sort of things. At least I do. I, I could not live without uh, Google Maps. I don't know how I'd get from one place to the next without it. And next up we have dining. Uh, looks like I uh, spent nearly $560 in just dining out. And I know that a lot of that, quite frankly, was uh, up in uh, New England uh, eating lobster. So that, that was uh, a lot of fun. But uh, that's not an entire $500 in lobster, but uh, there was a lot of uh, dining around. And uh, so, yeah, that's uh, something. Now, that is something that could definitely be shifted into uh, groceries expense if you're just strictly, uh, uh, you know, cooking in your RV and just doing it that way. And it probably would be much cheaper doing that way. Obviously, it would be. Um, but you might not get uh, really fun stuff like lobster if you're doing it that way too. So every now and again, you got to live and, you know, enjoy yourself, right? Dues and subscriptions. So let's take a look at dues and subscriptions over here. So um, biggest thing here, I guess, would be that I do have a Costco annual membership and I do have an Amazon Prime membership. Those are the ones that are really uh, contributing to uh, the dues and subscriptions. Entertainment, primarily, th this one is primarily, there's going to be another one in a moment that, that uh, deals with admission to uh, various um, venues that I've visited, uh, like the, uh, the Space uh, Science and Rocket Center and uh, uh, the Lucy and Desi Museum in uh, New York, you know, th those kinds of places. But um, the, the entertainment here is uh, just for things like uh, Netflix and YouTube premium. So that's my, this is my annual expense for, for that. I do give away things uh, from time to time. So I might uh, uh, record you know, an expense to my gifts category, stuff that I'm uh, giving to others. Groceries. Okay, 6,300 some odd dollars in groceries or about $526 monthly. And I think that this is fairly high. Note that this would primarily be buying groceries at Walmart and, uh, you know, in the Walmart market. And uh, so I expect that I'm getting pretty close to the best price that I could get on stuff. But, uh, yeah, um, that's one of the biggest expenses that I have for sure. And uh, it's not one that you can really um, get away from. So actually, I'm going to um, uh, paste the formulas over here that will... Uh, record them as a strictly nomad expense because I don't, you know, you, you got to eat, right? So let's make sure that that's in there. Uh, insurance is next. So there's auto insurance. M my insurance is kind of an interesting uh, situation in that uh, I do have a sticks and bricks home that uh, affords me, I guess, you know, some sort of a blended kind of rate for you know home and auto i've left the home insurance off of here and so that's um, not really a factor here this is strictly for the um, insurance on, on joy and uh, so that's what i'm paying on an annual basis about 131 dollars monthly if you broke it down that way 
Next is health insurance. We all need health insurance. I am past the magical age of 65, and so I am on Medicare. Uh, so that's typically where this is all uh, going to, this 4,000 some odd dollars is uh, all to Medicare and my Medicare supplement plan uh, in Wisconsin. So Wisconsin is uh, one of three states that have said, oh, no, 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 you can't have any of the federal supplement plans. You have to have ours. Come on, Wisconsin. That's just not cool. And then I do carry a liability umbrella. Um, so I'll just let that stand. You know, you may wish to have a discussion with your insurance agent regarding uh, a li liability umbrella. If you do not have one, uh, something definitely to think about. Uh, may give you a little bit of added protection, but it's not strictly uh, nomad uh, expense. You may or may not have it, but certainly auto insurance and health insurance uh, do fall into the strictly nomad category. So we'll have those um, in the total for the nomad column here. And then uh, I do have a, uh, a legal plan uh, with a uh, uh, legal provider. So you could kind of consider this to be like a retainer, an annual retainer, kind of like insurance, uh, but different. It's not really insurance. Medical and dental expenses. This was actually um, kind of m more than what will typically happen in a year. I think I had brand new glasses made just before I, um, well, this uh, last summer, just at about this time last summer, I um, had a new pair of glasses made and I also uh, needed to get a, you know, a, a year or two's, uh, well, I, I got a year's supply of contact lenses and glasses. So that's pretty much what this is. And then uh, there's uh, the nomad expenses. So, and these are ones that I very um, strictly relate only to, you know, what's going on with me out on the road. So there's uh, nomad dues and membership. So I'll just switch over to this tab here uh, just to kind of show you, um, let me make it a little bit bigger for you just to show you kind of what's going on with that. So, and I kind of uh, highlighted these rows here because this is all Planet Fitness membership. And th so I ran a separate total for that. So out of the uh, $755.96 I'm spending on Nomad dues and memberships, uh, $352, $353 of that is just in Planet Fitness alone. Um, <laughs> It seems like it might be kind of, and so, and that breaks down as about $25.32 per month, but then there's also an annual $49 thing that they throw in there once a year. Okay, whatever. Um, <clears throat> but, um, you know, I don't know, a, a typical truck stop shower, if you were to do that, my understanding is that they're kind of north of $15 at this point. So if I were to take two Planet Fitness showers in a month, I'm probably at least breaking even, maybe coming out a little bit ahead. Uh, but then you can see other things like um, Harvest Host membership and RV Lifestyle and Road Pass Pro. Uh, RV Trip Wizard uh, is actually probably my uh, go-to when it comes to trip planning and it's like a $65 annual. Uh, so that's kind of up there. All stays is another one that I simply would not be without. Uh, so anyway, you can see how that $756 expense breaks out. And that was right there. And then here's the uh, Nomad Entertainment. So this is uh, in, in, a, in contrast to my YouTube premium and Netflix subscription. There's this uh, Nomad Entertainment, which covers admission to uh, museums or, you know, other uh, venues that I've visited and that, you know, had a, a fee to get in. So that's what that's about. Uh, so I've spent a couple hundred dollars uh, just visiting various attractions. 
and then nomad gear and miscellaneous so that's a fairly high number and it, it, that's going to be quite variable from year to year i would imagine but um w one of the things that i know that's in this uh, time around and it and it accounts for about a quarter of this uh two thousand dollars is a new uh dash cam that i have purchased to install here in joy and uh, maybe we'll have an installation video for that uh, coming up and uh but uh, you know there's other uh stuff that you just kind of think i re i really should uh, get that and so you do and anyway so i've got a couple thousand dollars and just buying gear and and other stuff and then this is probably the one that a lot of people are going to gravitate to uh to really see how this is playing out for me anyway rv parks and campground fees has totaled about 4180 so that's about or about 350 dollars ish on a monthly basis so that's what i'm paying to park joy in uh, campgrounds i'm not always in a campground obviously sometimes i will use a harvest host site or a boondockers welcome site which is part of the same subscription uh, both the uh, harvest host and boondockers welcome as long as some additional add-ons like their golf course package which i've never stayed at a golf course so um, anyway but it is available uh, and of course if you're not familiar with harvest host and uh, boondockers welcome uh, many people swear by it. Uh, I'm questioning whether or not I'm getting enough value uh, out of it. it uh, it's a fairly hefty annual expense for me, but it's, it's not totally out of line. And I do use it on an annual basis. So whether, whether or not I'm getting back the same amount of money that I'm putting into it, yeah, probably. I, I would say I am. Uh, but I'm maybe no more than break even on that one so but that makes it worth it and especially with boondockers welcome which is just a network of individuals who have additional room on their property where they could uh, let you come and uh, park on their property overnight and uh, sometimes you know you can stay for uh, the, the maximum i think i've ever seen is five days never done it but um, uh, personally but uh, some people might might do that a uh, couple, 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 three nights, maybe maximum for me. But um, the one thing that I do really appreciate about Boondockers Welcome is if you are in an area and you need to do a little bit of exploration, you need two nights, right? You got to arrive somewhere, sleep overnight, then have that next day to do whatever you want to do in that area, and then a place to come back to and sleep for that night. And then the next, the day after that, you can drive away and go on to your next thing. So I really appreciate the, the ability to be able to stay for two nights at a Boondockers Welcome site. With Harvest Host sites, which are typically, um, well, distilleries, wineries, um, and breweries, and um, farms, and museums, and other attractions of that type, you can only stay one night and um, the anticipation is that you will spend, it used to be $20, it's now $30 with that business or, you know, whatever the attraction is, uh, as a thank you for allowing uh, you to park there overnight. Okay, fine, but uh, again, it's one night only and that doesn't give you the time to explore an area with a day like a two-night stay would. So that's kind of off-putting to me personally. Um, and uh, $30, I mean, spending $30 with um, a business is pretty much equivalent to uh, an, a nightly stay at a state park. So you're not really saving any money doing the, the harvest host thing. Uh, but many people swear by it. I, it. It's 
for some, it's like everything. They love it, and uh, they wouldn't be without it. That's great. That's fine. I, I kind of tend to be more of a state park and kind of guy, so I, I guess there's that. Um, I do love having the option to, uh, to, to use some of these areas. The uh, Ford Early V8 Museum was uh, a harvest host site, and I really only needed uh, one day. I got there, toured the museum, spent the night, and moved on. And that worked out just fine in that particular instance. But um, sometimes you really do want those two nights so that you have a day that you can, an entire day that you can do other things in, in that same area. Okay. Uh, beating that dead horse to death. Let's move on. Um, and here's where the whole digital nomad thing kind of uh, plays in here. Uh, I'm spending $2,400 a month, or I'm sorry, annually, uh, $200 a month in just getting online, right? Uh, how do I get to the internet? Well, I spend $200 a month. That's how I get to the internet. How is that working? Well, I have Starlink on board. That's 150 right there. And then the other is T-Mobile uh, 5G home internet. And um, that I'm getting for 50. It's actually a $60, but it's, but I have it bundled with other um, T-Mobile services. They are my uh, cell phone provider. And so I do get it for uh, $50 a month. There, uh, we are right on the verge, I guess, of T-Mobile saying, yeah, you can't be wandering around with your T-Mobile 5G home internet box. Uh, and so rather than paying uh, f uh, $50, uh, we're rolling out a new plan for folks who are doing the RV thing, and it's going to cost you $160. What are they thinking? Who? I don't know. <clears throat> yeah, don't get me started, I guess. That, I mean, wow. <laughs> okay. My understanding, however, is that there is a business plan. And I do happen to uh, qualify under the business plan. And apparently I can get that for $50 a month or $60 a month or something. I don't know. But uh, if uh, they pull the plug on me with my 5G home internet box and I can't get the internet that way anymore, because Starlink is, okay, Starlink is fine, but like, first of all, you got to have a clear view of the sky. Second of all, you have to be someplace where you can do it. If you're in a Walmart parking lot, just, you know, staying the night and then moving on, you probably still want to get on the internet. Maybe you want to watch, uh, you know, a Netflix movie. Uh, but, you know, no, you're not going to pull out a Starlink dish and stick it out on the pavement of the parking lot. Yeah, so you need something that's kind of uh, discreet. And my uh, T-Mobile 5G home internet box has been very discreet. Uh, I just stick it up in the uh, on the dashboard uh, of uh, Joy up here in the cab and uh, over, off to the side. And so it's almost unnoticeable. And it just does awesome if I'm in a uh, Walmart parking lot. But it works also very well in campgrounds, assuming that we're kind of close to something else that would... Uh, be like an interstate or whatever that would have, uh, you know, T-Mobile 5G available in, in that area. If I need to, though, in a state park, I can always pull out the, uh, the Starlink. That's, it's not a problem in a state park. And a lot of people do have Starlink in state parks. So, but anyway, so that's the, the story. Uh, $200 a month, uh, 2400 annual, just to stay online. And I will call that a strictly nomad thing. I think we all need internet when we're out on the road. Your mileage may vary here. You may not uh, have anywhere near this level of expense. That I think the whole nomad internet thing is a whole different discussion that we could have. And um, I may be in a much better place to have that discussion in the near future if T-Mobile decides to pull the plug on roaming around with a, a T-Mobile 5G home internet box, which strictly, according to their terms of service, is not a thing. You're not supposed to be able to do that. 
But apparently an awful lot of T-Mobile uh, stores have said, sure, you can do that. N you know, nobody's going to stop you from doing it. So, uh, and they even will possibly go so far as to uh, give you an address to use because the 5G home internet service is reserved for areas with excess capacity is how they, I guess, say it. And um, so it's not available at all addresses throughout the country. And uh, sometimes I have had absolutely horrible T-Mobile 5G um, service, uh, very low speeds, whatnot. And uh, this may be uh, primarily due to, uh, you know, tower congestion or, you know, whatever. They just don't have the bandwidth at a particular tower. And if I try to get on it, yeah, it's not a good, it's not a good experience. It may be enough to get me by, and that's fine if that's all, all I need. If I'm sitting someplace for a period of time, like I wouldn't want to go into a state park and not have any uh, ability to use Starlink and find that I have like no bandwidth whatsoever on a T-Mobile tower. That would be a horrible situation. Hasn't happened, but it could and probably will at some point. Anyway. Moving on, uh, apparently I bought uh, $345 worth of personal belongings. I, I, you know, I have taxes kind of grayed out here. Everybody's tax situation is going to be different. You should definitely include taxes in, uh, you know, your um, projection of expenses if you're going to go out and kind of do this nomad thing. Um, but I have left it off here uh, just because it is such a highly variable thing. Um, for federal last year, I didn't have a tax liability, uh, for state. Yeah. Wisconsin definitely taxed me, but, and this is going to be different, to, uh, state to state as well. Some states of course don't have uh, tax at all, income tax at all. So, okay. Rock on South Dakota and Texas and Florida, and some others. Uh, but, um, other states are going to definitely have, uh, some, uh, some taxes to throw at you. And, uh, but between the, uh, zero tax bracket on long-term capital gains distributions and the standard deduction being as high as it has been for a good number of years, that's slated to come back down. So I'm not sure how this is going to play out, but when you put the standard deduction and the long-term capital gains zero tax rate together, you get somewhere in the vicinity of about 44K that you can um, uh, work with and f at least for federal stay in the zero tax bracket. So there's that. Uh, and that's partly why you'd want to be looking at this information and figuring out, well, you know, can I do this? Um, what, what is, what will ultimately be my tax liability if I do something like this? How will taxes factor into this? So, but you need to answer that uh, particular question on your own. I've just left gray boxes here for that. A telephone, uh, $30 a month. I am grandfathered onto a rather old T-Mobile plan, which uh, probably doesn't give me, well, it doesn't give me everything that uh, the new Magenta plans would, but the new Magenta plans are like uh, way more expensive than the $30 I'm spending a month here. And I have, um, yeah, so <laughs> if I were to do something that uh, would uh, force me to abandon this plan, it would get a lot more expensive a lot quicker. So you should probably uh, definitely scrutinize your uh, your monthly or annual uh, cell phone uh, plans cost here. That's It may not be anywhere near as cheap as uh, mine happens to be. Okay, so hey, we're down at the bottom. So this is what it is for me annually from the period of April 1st, 2023 to March 31st, 2024. It cost me 30000 a little over $30,000 annual to be out on the road exploring the country. Month, on a monthly basis, that's about uh, $2,530. So, I hope that this has been um, interesting for you. 
And uh, before I close uh, this video out, I'll just kind of go back to the whole Strictly Nomad side of this. And you can kind of see the things that I've thrown into this category. Gas, re vehicle registration, vehicle maintenance, uh, dining, groceries, auto insurance, health insurance, Nomad uh, RV park and campground fees online services and phone and that cost me twenty three thousand five hundred twelve dollars and seventy three cents during this one year period or about one thousand nine hundred fifty nine dollars and thirty nine cents uh, for um, for the month so just under two thousand dollars a month Okay, uh, leave any questions that you may have about this uh, expense analysis in the uh, comments below. It would be awesome if you would like the video. That uh, helps a lot, more than you know. And um, uh, subscribe if you enjoy this content. And uh, we'll uh, just take it from there as we go forward. Hopefully there will be a lot more stuff that you can enjoy in the future from Joy and Route. All right, have a great one. We'll see you in the next video.